Well, welcome to another episode of Coronacation on Naomi White in Brisbane. And today I'm joined by Carol Duncan in Newcastle. How are you, Carol? I am very well, thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you for joining me. Carol, can you um, tell us a little bit about yourself? I spent essentially 30 years working in radio for both commercial radio for many years as a, a younger woman and then for 14 or 15 years with the ABC until uh, that first lot of very savage uh, job cuts at the end of 2014. So I think there were about 400 of us went at that stage and uh, with forced redundancies at, at that time. And of course, we're watching that all happen again and again and again. And um, yeah, that's, that's really difficult to watch at the moment. Yeah. It's, it's triggering, as people would say. Yeah, yeah. I can imagine. And mm. a lot of people are looking at what's going on at the ABC uh, and wondering where it's going to end because we all feel very passionately about our ABC in Australia. Um, we do. And, and I, on my very last day on air, I actually received um, an email from the then managing director, Mark Scott, which I thought was very nice. I'm sure he didn't email all 400 people, but he, um, he uh, apologised for what we were going through. And um, it was a really good email, actually. And I, I replied to him and I, I said, look, you know, I do understand that in every organisation, sometimes changes need to be made. Digital disruption is is a real thing in media. Um, no, that didn't mean that, you know, I liked it, of course. But I, I in that email, I said to him that um, I needed to hold him to ensure that the ABC stayed as relevant and as important uh, for my children going into the future as it has been for for me and for all of us um and i wrapped it up by saying because our kids need to know that somebody will tell them the truth mm. um but yes that was six years ago now but um uh we're still seeing that happen and we we now more than ever i think need a very strong and independent public broadcaster well, we need strong and independent media, full stop, don't we, all over the world. It does mm. seem to be, um, it feels like it's getting corrupted at the moment with the rise in social media and opinion and people listening to people on social as opposed to... Mm. It, it worries me enormously, actually. I, I said to my husband this morning, I said, do you know what? We're actually, we really are locked down. We can't go to Queensland. We shouldn't go to Victoria. We can't go to Western Australia, let alone going overseas. We really are locked get locked down. And there are sadly some governments in the world that would like to keep that a permanent state of affairs. But um, uh, for Australians, I think there will be a gradual reckoning whilst we try to find a way through coronavirus, whether that's um, uh, a vaccine, hopefully, or you know whatever that new normal on the other side of this is because we've really got no idea yet um i think australians are going to have to come to terms with the fact that things are going to be somewhat different they're going to be very different and we're australians are big travelers and at the moment we can, we're grounded it's awful yeah, mm. we literally are and then we've just seen Qantas announce its decision around job cuts and grounding as aircraft just yesterday so it certainly does seem to oh, be that's heartbreaking and and I guess this is one of my observations from many years in media that when you talk about large numbers, people don't relate because it becomes so big. It's like the bushfires mm. last year and early this year. My father lost his home in the bushfires in October. It seems like a whole lifetime ago. At that stage in New South Wales, about 50 homes had been destroyed and it was still a topic where the people were, the media were talking about each home that was being destroyed and then it became so vast that we just you know it we know it's bad but it sort of loses its personal impact and I think we see that with the the numbers of coronavirus cases and deaths in the US we, it's so big now that we don't just don't quite get it um but I I, I think um I think that the the other side of this will be good I think it'll be great but I cannot picture it yet. But back to what you were saying about Qantas, of course, here in Newcastle, what that meant was just under 200 jobs from Jetstar have gone. Mm. And that's pilots, ground crew, cabin crew, engineering staff. Um, so it's, it's significant. Yeah, and I think, look, you've raised a really great point. I mean, it, it really highlights the importance of telling a person's story or a family's story to bring it back to reality. So. Mm. Um, one of the reasons I'm talking to you, actually. So how has COVID-19 affected you personally? 
It's been very interesting. Most of my work is done right here in this seat. Uh, with this computer and this microphone um, since leaving the ABC. I've held a few really interesting and terrific roles, but a lot of my work has increasingly uh, become online, uh, working for other organisations and uh, individuals to help them with their own storytelling. And I had a moment actually earlier this week where I was editing a piece for uh, a state government department. And after having done the interview and I was sitting here and all of a sudden it just hit me like, oh, this is actually my happy place. This is the thing that I do best is telling other people's stories and working with sound um, to try to make things matter. And, and so for me, I've actually, I've actually had a little bit more work. On the one hand, I did have a very significant uh, content contract fall over um, that would have been a really good in, in the area of health. And that's something that I really would have loved. That fell over and I can understand why they had to pull the pin on that project. You know, that, that's really the least of their worries just at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, but other little bits and pieces have actually picked up a lot for me. And this has been because all of a sudden, everybody has had to go online. And I think particularly social media for a decade has been treated as small companies and in particular have looked at social media as something that the receptionist can do or my EA can do that or as, as something that, they didn't need to take all that seriously. As long as they threw a bit of stuff on Facebook occasionally, they were fine. And I think there's been a great realisation that, you know, a lot of us who work in, in content and media and so on know anyway that it's incredibly powerful and you should be there and you should be using it as a, a, a primary engagement tool with your, your customer or potential customer base. And all of a sudden I've had contact from people who are saying, oh gosh, I need to be talking to my clients my customers, my existing customer base about what we are doing. Mm -hmm. So if we talk about um, dentists and orthodontists who all of a sudden couldn't see people, uh, one of the other areas that's come up a little bit is from, uh, the, the, from, from law, from lawyers and solicitors who, oh, it sounds so much like ambulance chasing, but it's actually, it's, it's incredibly sensible. Wills and powers of attorney and, and that sort of area. Um, because we, we just didn't, sorry about the helicopter. Um, we didn't know how bad this virus was going to get in Australia. And of course, these are things that we always put off anyway, who wants to do their will? So there have been those sorts of things, content and messaging around those, um, just helping people actually communicate when you know they weren't able to have their clients and customers in their businesses anymore. Along with a couple of other, I, I, I also um, produce, have a lovely contract with an international charitable trust, um, which I really love producing content for them. So that's a lot of uh, podcasts and writing and redoing their website for them and things like that. So um, <clears throat> it's, it's enjoyable. It's, it's creative. I'm, I'm, I'm really lucky. I'm really lucky because this is, you know, as I said earlier, this sitting here at this desk with headphones on and a microphone, that's my happy place. <laughs> <laughs> and have you noticed any difference in your work that you do with the Newcastle Council? Ah, well, as a councillor, that's been really interesting because um, the New South Wales uh, local government legislation had to be changed for us to meet virtually. So up until I think our first uh, Zoom meeting um, was in March and prior to that, or March might have actually been the last one that we had face-to-face uh, -face in the chamber. So the legislation had to be changed for councils to actually meet um, remotely and, and by Zoom. And I, I, I actually really like it. It's like, you know, a bit classic newsreader, you're all business on the top and your slippers on the bottom. It's, <laughs> it's while you're discussing the budget, you know, it's, it's fantastic. Um, the difficulty about that though has been that there are still a significant number of people in every community, I guess, particularly older people who don't have internet access. They don't have email. So they may be having a problem and they can't easily contact you. You know, they can call you can't go and see them or so it, it, it's it's the shift online was inevitable I think the coronavirus has sped it up uh, significantly one of the side effects of it that I actually really really love is that for years many organizations have uh, talked the talk about yes we offer flexibility uh, wonderful flexibility and when push comes to shove if they can't eyeball you and yeah. see you in the office you're off at the beach or you're at the pub or you know hanging out with the girlfriends or whatever it is that you're doing there was a real trust issue 
And all of a sudden that has changed and it's changed massively. And I hope that this continues to be the case where companies have had to say, we need you to work from home. Please work from home. Here is the equipment to work from home. Um, because otherwise their viability, you know, the, the numerous companies would tank if their employees weren't able to work from home. So there's been that huge shift and I hope that the trust continues to go with that. We're seeing, I was reading a really interesting article in the New York Times just a couple of weeks ago about what's happening to um, tenancy, uh, real business, real, um, commercial real estate prices in Manhattan because all of a sudden those massive international organisations that have miles of real estate in Manhattan have gone, we don't need to be paying for this. Everybody's working at home. They're still just as productive, if not more, because they're not commuting. Oh, my Lord. So, I don't know, maybe my dream of a Manhattan apartment one lifetime will come true. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I think it. that's happening now too. I think a lot of organisations in Australia with large real estate footprints are going, mm, I'm not sure. But that's mm. kind of a long tail decision because they've got leases. But I do think that um, things are going to shift there. That seems to be the word on the street anyhow. So mm. And... Who knows what else will come along as, as you know, a long-term um, cultural and societal change because of, of this pandemic. Mm. Um, the journalist in me is really curious about that in a, in a positive way, you know, like what, what else could come out of that? But trust in your workers, I think, is a really important and really positive thing that hopefully will absolutely. stay with us. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, we're really in an interesting time at the moment. We've been in social isolation for some time and we're starting to re-emerge in some way. Mm. Um, but it's still, as you've said, it's still a great big unknown as to how the world is, is changed and will continue to change. Do you have any advice or perspectives that may be beneficial to others as, they, as we come out of this? Oh, my gosh. Um, the... the the, the older I get, um, the more I, I think I try to encourage people to, um, and one of your former guests, Shivani Gupta, would love this, to find their zen. Um, and by that, I, really what I just mean is, is trying to come to terms with the things that you can change, mm -hmm. um, you know, desiderata, the things that you can change, uh, the things that you can't, and just and trying to become sanguine mm. um, to some degree about that because otherwise it will eat you alive. You know, I've only just seen my father for the first time uh, a week and a half ago uh, since just after the bushfires. Um, he's in northern New South Wales. And it was awful not being able to go and see him. Um, they it, it took them six, seven months to actually... Uh, find themselves in a, a new home of their own and mm. so not being able to visualize where he was was really awful but you know I, I also have another friend of mine a well-known Australian rock star who lives in Italy with his family but has been stranded in Australia since um, since January mm. uh, because he can't get back to Italy uh, I have other friends who work overseas a, a girlfriend of mine her family now lives or the children adult children are in Sydney she and the husband are based in in Dubai the husband at the moment is in Oman because he was in Oman for a weekend working and hasn't been able to go home for months oh either. my goodness uh -huh. so you know I I don't think I'm really going to run out of toilet paper or pasta or any of those things and um, I think I think I'm I'm really lucky at the moment compared to you know those sorts of stories that I, I know of how other people are faring. Mm. It's interesting you raised a siderata. Somebody played that to me, uh, or or an audio version of that. I think it was a musical version of that actually, uh, not so long ago, and it had been something like thirty years I think since I'd heard it. It was quite beautiful, and it's got so much relevance right now. I think everybody's grandmother used to have a cheap print of it on the wall once upon <laughs> a time. But yeah, I think, um, you know, and, and talk to people. And if, if you're not coping, um, reach out and, and talk to people. It's really, it's really important to mm. do that. Mm. Yeah, no, I completely agree. And I, I'm certainly seeing incredible kindness and, and more community spirit out of people. So um, long may it continue. Yeah, but I'm with you on that. Yes. <laughs> Carol, thank you so much for your time today. It's been such a pleasure talking to you. I appreciate you uh, joining me on Coronacation.
Thank you for having me. It's terrific. You're welcome. Have a great day.